can be really scary and overwhelming to treat your first patient, so today I'm going to be giving you my best tips to help you treat your first patient and smash your first treatment. So if you're new here, hi, I'm Faris, I'm a third year dental student currently studying in London and I make videos to help dental students reach their fullest potential and give applicants a little glimpse into the crazy world of dentistry. So I know firsthand how tough it is to treat your first patient, you're responsible for a whole real life human being now, not just some phantom heads, but I've gone from being a bit worried and scared about treating patients to absolutely loving it and enjoying to see them every single week. So as a result of that, I want to give you guys my top tips to make sure that you're absolutely prepared to see your first patient. And if you enjoy this video and this style of content, I'd really appreciate it if you could like, comment and subscribe and hit that notification bell down below. So let's get right into it. Now my first tip is to make sure that you brush up on your dental knowledge. There's a lot that you need to cover and go through when you're treating your first patient. You need to know the different diseases, their interactions, how to do certain procedures and so much more. And if you're going to treat a patient, you need to know these things off by heart and you really need to understand them fully. So the first way I like to implement this is by using different resources online to cement my dental knowledge. You can do this by going over notes that relates to different clinical cases and diseases, or you can look at information that relates to different dental procedures, such as taking a six point pocket chart, doing BPE. This sounds quite basic, but it's very, very important to know this when you're seeing that patient. A lot of the time in dental school, we become reliant on our tutors to tell us what to do. But if you have good base knowledge and you have an understanding of what procedures need to be done when and what diseases do what, you'll be able to be a lot more prepared when you actually see that patient in real life. One of the best resources I found online is actually another YouTube channel called the Two Dentists YouTube channel. These guys have made a series of very, very, very good videos that help you understand the basic concepts before you see your first patient. Having this stuff categorized in short videos is very, very useful. And remember before my first patient, I was binging all the videos just to be prepared. So I'd really recommend their channel and they've got some great content. The next thing I'd recommend with regards to your dental knowledge is to make sure you know how to give a medical and dental history. Now, I remember I went over this so many times in different tutorials and sessions. And I thought, oh, medical history, you literally just read off a sheet and it's all done. But you'll realize that it can be a bit difficult to communicate this in a colloquial fashion. Bear in mind on that medical history form, you get neurological disorders. If you just tell a patient, oh yeah, just list your neurological disorders to me, they're not really going to understand what you're saying. You need to be able to categorize different medical conditions and explain it to the patient in a colloquial way. Additionally, you want to get really good at taking these medical and dental histories. You want to be very efficient at taking them because a lot of the time at the start, this is the thing that wastes the most amount of time. You'll spend about 10, 20 minutes just trying to go through some histories that you could have done in like five or 10 minutes. So one way I'd really recommend you get better at taking histories is by practicing with your family members. Just sit down with your mum or your dad, brother, sister, and start going through a history with them. If you see them getting confused or not really understanding what you're talking about, you'll understand that, okay, maybe I'm not being that clear. You can also practice with your dental school colleagues, but they kind of know what comes in a history, so it might not be super representative of a patient, and that's why I'd really recommend you do it with a family member. And again, I'm gonna be plugging the Two Dentists channel. They have a really good document that shows you how to do the medical history in a colloquial way, so I will give a link to that channel down below. And the last thing I'd recommend with regards to brushing up on your dental knowledge is to know your list of drugs. Now, patients come in with a concoction of different drugs, and it's really useful when you know what each drug does. A lot of the time, you'll see the same drug recurring with a lot of different patients, and it can be very useful just to be able to identify it quickly, see if there's any contraindications, any problems that you need to deal with with regards to any type of treatment. One thing I would recommend is to download the BNF app. It's a very good app that shows you all the different drugs and their interactions, what they treat. Additionally, I'd also say go on Quizlet and find different Quizlets that test you on different drugs. I'll see if I can find a few and link them down below so you guys can practice before your first patient. So my second major tip is to make sure that you read the patient's clinical notes before they get in the chair. Now, you have to remember that this is now a real life patient. This isn't a phantom head anymore. There's information about the patient that you can refer to before they even get into the chair. So the first thing I'd recommend you do when you look at their notes is to look into any medical conditions and past dental treatment. This will allow you to gorge what treatment needs to be done today, what you should expect from the patient, their expectations from previous appointments. Additionally, you might be able to find a care plan which will show you the exact procedure that the patient's expecting on the day. Remember when you're treating that first patient, you want to ensure that you have as much information as possible before they get into the chair. Of course, this is different if the patient's brand new and never been there before, but make an assumption that there might be some notes on the system. I'd also recommend talking to older years or people that have used the system before so that you know how to access these notes quickly. The next thing I'd really recommend with regards to looking at the patient's notes is to observe their radiographs. Now at the start, I didn't really look at radiographs that much because I thought, oh, it's not important. We'll probably just take new ones when the patient comes. What are you? An idiot sandwich. But this isn't the right way of thinking at all. Looking at the patient's radiographs can give you a lot more clarity with regards to their bone levels and current dental state. Remember, just looking in a patient's mouth doesn't reveal the whole story. So it's very useful to look at past radiographs to be able to assess their dental condition. And if you do take new radiographs, you can compare them and see any disease progression. On top of this, it's important to be able to read different radiographs. So make sure that you revise that before you get into the dental chair. And the last thing I'd recommend with regards to reading notes is to make sure you can identify any complex treatments you may have to do. Sometimes a patient comes in and you just have to do a simple BPE and scale and polish. 
polish. But other times you might have a more complex case, whereby you may need to do things such as adjust a denture or do a jaw registration or other complex treatments. And if you do identify these complex treatments before the patient comes in, it's really good because it allows you to talk to your tutor and find out any steps that you need to take and how to deal with these patients. You want to be as prepared as possible. Remember, you have to be professional when you're treating these patients. And last and by no means least, I think it's really important to practice with your friends before you see that first patient. Now this is one of my most important tips because a lot of the time you don't really know what you're bad at when it comes to treating patients. You may be really good at assessments and getting high marks in the content stuff, but actually presenting this to the patient and being able to implement your knowledge in a practical way can be quite difficult. So practicing with friends really helps you identify your weaknesses and improve upon them. And one of the ways you can really help practicing with your friends is by doing a procedure on them in the dental chair. At my university we'd have sessions where our colleagues would be our patients and we'd treat them as such. And I think in these sessions you want to try and make them as realistic as possible. Even though they're your friends, try and really treat them as patients. Ensure that you're explaining things in good detail and not using jargon. All this stuff really adds up because when you have that real patient in the seat, it's going to translate well and allow you to be more professional. Bear in mind that practicing on phantom heads just isn't the same, so having a real person there can really help. Additionally, I'd also recommend to make sure that you practice your communication with your friends. You can set up calls or sessions where you go over different clinical cases. When you do this, it will allow you to test your clinical knowledge and see how you deal with more complex cases. Doing this in a group setting is a lot better than just doing it alone because when you're with your friends, they might spot things that you miss and I found it's really useful to do it with others. I'll put some links down below to different books and websites you can use to find clinical cases and test yourself with your friends. You can get your friends to act like different types of patients, so one that's a little bit more frustrated, a bit more nervous, etc. By doing this, it will allow you to adapt and overcome any difficult patients you might deal with in the future and your friends are going to be brutally honest with you if they think you're not communicating well or doing a good job at helping the patient. So I hope you found that video useful. If you want to see more videos about maximizing your time at dental school, check out this playlist I made for you here and if you just want to see some dental vlogs and what I do at dental school, check out this playlist over here. Thanks for watching and have a great day.